Nathan Advent Church. You can answer. <laughs> good evening. And good evening and welcome to those of you who've joined online. We'll start with the word of prayer and we'll go right into our song service. Let us bow our heads. Dear kind, merciful Father, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to assemble both here and online for this Wednesday night prayer meeting. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us thus far through this week, and we ask that the things that we hear in this program this evening might give us the strength we need to go through the rest of this week into thy Sabbath. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We'll start with hymn number 295. Hymn number 295. Hymn number 295. Chief of sinners though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me. Die that I might live on high, Die that I might never die, As the branches to the vine, I am his and he is mine. Oh, the height of Jesus' love, higher than the heaven above, deeper than the deepest sea, lasting as eternity. Love that found me wondrous thought, found me when I sought him not. Chief of sinners though I be, Christ is all in all to me. All my wants to him are known, all my sorrows are his own. Save with him from earthly strife, he sustains the hidden life. Amen. We'll now turn to number 334. Come thou fount, number 334. <coughs> number 334. Three, three, four. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever to adore thee, may I still thy goodness prove. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come. And I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the throne of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind me closer still to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Our final hymn will be number 520. He hideth my soul, number 520. Number 520. A wonderful 
wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord, He taketh my burden away. He holdeth me up and I shall not be moved, He giveth me strength as my day. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. With numberless blessings each moment he crowns and fills with his fullness divine. I sing in my rapture, O oh, glory to God for such a redeemer as mine. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. When clothed in his brightness, transported I rise to meet him in clouds of the sky. His perfect salvation, his wonderful love, I'll shout with the millions on high. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. I'll now turn the prayer meeting over to Elder Jose Otero. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, at this time that uh, we have available uh, to study your word and to reflect on uh, how our characters are and how our relationship are with you. We ask the Heavenly Father that... Um, you may continue to guide us and let us make a decision and commitment to follow you. Give us the strength we need and, and uh, clarity of mind to understand your word. We thank you so much for your blessings. In Christ I pray. Amen. Good evening or good morning, depending on where you're listening. Um, we're going to be looking at Mount of Blessing um, that is found in Matthew chapter 5, reading uh, Spirit of Prophecy, Mount of Blessing by Alan White. And also, uh, Desire of Ages, um, you can look at this one also. Desire of Ages, chapter 31. We're going to be looking at um, Matthew. Uh, let me go there. Matthew, chapter 5, uh, 
verse 5. It says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And I was looking at this, and I said to myself, wow, this, there's a lot here to um, study, but uh, we only have a limited amount of time, and so we're going to um, just uh, deal with uh, a small portion of this topic. Blessed are those that are meek, for they should inherit the earth. Um, I see the Sermon on the Mount as a blueprint to attain heaven, uh, to be a blessing in this life and also a blueprint in how to do ministry. The Sermon on the Mount is Christ telling his people, this is who I am and how I live and I live to give glory to God. Amen. Then Christ says, follow me for eternal life and for inheritance of the earth. In other words, we're going to be rulers um, in the new kingdom. Now, as far as meekness is concerned, uh, Western culture and also in other cultures um, do not hold meekness as a virtue. It's not a surprise to you, right? In contrast to other cultures, there are cultures, though, that place a high value on meekness. You know, it's good to be humble. Um, but this culture here, Western culture specifically, um, when it comes to the translation of meekness, uh, they have a pro it's problematic. It, it is. It's, it's problematic. You have to be really careful. Um, if you look at some translation or some other synonyms, uh, it, you hear gentleness and humility. Um, and that's as far as it goes. Uh, because meekness is seen as weakness. It, it has an overtone of, of being um, not strong. And if you look up the meaning of meekness, you see words like tame, timid, mild, bland, unambitious, retiring, weak, docile. I guess docile is not too bad, right? Uh, in some cases, intimidated, spiritless, broken, wimpish. Now, is this a description of meekness? I don't believe so. How would you describe Christ? Wimpish? Was Christ broken? Was he weak? Can you think about, uh, just imagine Christ. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Pharisee. I'm not going to work no more miracles. I'm going to sit down and you guys do what you need to do. That's not, that's not what happened, right? According to the Bible, um, meekness has a uh, different meaning. How about Moses? Was he um, weak? No. No. But he is the meekest man on the earth, right? Yeah. And how about uh, David? Was he wimpish? No. No? We hear stories about um, um, him cutting off somebody's head, right? Goliath? Goliath. Right. Well, I don't see um, um, David as being weak. How about Paul? Paul was fearless, right? He had this relentless desire to continue forward. And think about all the difficulties he went through life without glasses, right? Because he had a bad eyesight. And the things that uh, he had to go through, getting beat up and shipwrecked and bitten by snake and all kinds of things. And so we understand that biblical meekness is, is um, not at all being weak. Two components I see uh, for this quality comes into play in my mind. And um, I see this in the Bible, is that a conflict in which an individual is unable to com control or influence circumstances. Is that true today? Can we control um, or influence circumstances sometime? No. no, that's right. And what is the typically the response of somebody when they cannot control a certain circumstance? They cannot influence. Well, what, what comes out of the person? Anger, frustration, right? Bitterness. But one who is meek is guided by the Spirit of God. And so someone that's meek has an ability to, to understand that God can direct events. So, and therefore, meekness is therefore an active and deliberate acceptance of undesirable circumstances. 
that are wisely seen by the individual as only part of a larger picture. So in other words, what you're going through, if you're meek, you're going to say, okay, I, this is undesirable, but let that will be done. And I'm going to continue to look for guidance um, uh, of God. And then the, the one who is meek is going to say, okay, I'm going to see how God delivers me. I'm going to see what can I learn. I'm going to see what blessings come out of this. So there is a patient and hopeful endurance of undesirable circumstances. And so this identifies the person as extremely vulnerable and weak in the outside, right? But inward, there's, it, it, there's a resilience and, a, and strength that goes beyond human capacity, human understanding. So meekness does not identify the weak, but more precisely, it identifies the strong that has been placed in a position of weakness where they can persevere without giving up. Amen. Job, for example. Job was seen as someone weak, right? No. Perhaps someone sinful. I wanted to just give an understanding of, um, of weakness and meekness, two different things. God says, let your light sh so shine before men that they may be seen your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. See, Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount so that his Father will get the glory. And for the disciples to develop a way of life, Christ's aim was to create a lifestyle in his disciples. Not only his disciples at that time, but his disciples throughout eternity. To make people think of the value of God and to call attention to God by his character of his people. Let us go to Psalms 37 and we're going to read verse 11. In Psalms chapter 37, verse 11, this psalm was written by David. It says, But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. So I saw this. I found this very interesting. I thought it was a good uh, place to start because of what it says about the meek and what they're going to uh, possess and the delight that they're going to have. Now, in this earth, when we think of wealth, we think of money, right? And if somebody does have land, you think of, you know, like an estate. But it says here, they're going to inherit the earth. We're not just talking about a small plot of land or an estate or even an island. We're talking about the earth. And in this earth, there's an abundance of wealth. And I'm thinking, why is that? Why is that? And, I'm, and I came to the conclusion that everybody's meek. So they're not going to be no sinners. So you're going to have peace. So peace of mind is wealth. Okay? So a characteristic of the people who are meek are going to be this, this delight that they're going to have, the land that they're going to own, as opposed to this world. You know, war is expensive. You, the, the bomb that uh, was dropped in Afghanistan, what was that, $20 million? That's expensive, very expensive. Let us continue. Psalm 37 and verse 9, it says there, we're still there, just um, go up. It says, for evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. So we're talking about waiting. People like to wait. No, we have to learn to wait, right? Yes. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him, right? That's what I hear in the Bible. That's what I read. Don't agonize yourself over those that prosper in his ways. You know, there's a lot of people that prosper because they take the easy route. They take a shortcut. Shortcut. Sorry. They refrain from anger and forsake wrath. 
you know, these things, uh, emotions tend to uh, make us behave in a way that's evil. And so meek has a characteristic of someone who's willing to wait. You know, waiting is important, especially in relationship, right? Um, I remember there was uh, someone who was a Christian, not a Seventh-day Adventist, but he was famous. And he believes that you should not have uh, sex before marriage. Mm -hmm. So he got together with someone, and, and, and guess what happened with the female? Eventually, what did she do? She couldn't wait. So what did she do? She left. She left him. Was that a good thing? No. Yes. No, it's okay. If you're in a relationship and the person cannot wait until you're married, and they give you an ultimatum what you should do. You, you got to go, right? You got to go. So, so what happens when you wait? Waiting, what it does is, 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 is sift the important things from the fluff. That's what it does. Patience build your emotions, your physical and spiritual um, health, right? Um, when you build muscle, does it, is it quick? No. It's slow. And so you build it slow, you, you develop patience, and that makes you meek. Then it puts you in a position to help somebody else. And it goes the same way with anything else. You can uh, business, it could be church, it could be anything else. But one characteristic that brings glory to God is someone who can wait, which is someone also that could be meek. Another characteristic of those that are meek in Proverbs uh, chapter 3, the next book over. In Proverbs chapter 3, and verse 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So someone who's meek, what kind of characteristics are they going to have? It's going to be a trusting, right? A, a, a trusting faith, right? They, they believe that God will work for them and vindicate them when others are oppressing or opposed to them. So this, this biblical meaning of meekness is, has a deep root in, in confidence that God is for you, not against you. But how do you develop trust? Right? How do you develop trust? Let's say with someone else. One thing I found is that you, it's good to be reliable. Right? If you say, I'm going to be there, I'm going to do this for you, and you're there, that builds trust. Another way is to tell the truth. Right? I know uh, people, some young people, even some older people, they lie about the smallest little thing. Even if it's small, it doesn't matter. They still lie. And after a while, that becomes a habit. They have a term for that. And after a while, it just becomes a way of life. And so when you're speaking to that person, you don't know whether to believe them or not because they're telling you half truth and half lies. That doesn't build trust. So when we're dealing with God, we have to be honest with ourselves and say, listen, Lord, I, I, um, I have some confessions to make, right? Also, when you share feelings with someone, you develop trust. And some people say, when you say no, you know, some people always say yes, 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 yes. Sometimes you gotta say no. You know, let the person know how you really feel in a nice way. I know somebody that always said yes, but when they said no, they meant it, right? So you believe them when they said no. Next characteristic, let's go to uh, Proverbs chapter 16. We're looking at um, meekness in a biblical sense. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3, it says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit thy way. So meek, someone who's meek, they make commitments to God, right? And... Um, I, I looked up the, the word um, commit in Hebrew, and um, it's translated as row. I thought that was funny because I've, I've heard this term, oh, that's how you row. 
and it means commit. That's how you, that's how you function. So when you commit to God, you're going to dis discover something interesting, that God is trustworthy. So trustworthy that you're going to roll. You're going to roll, right? You're going to roll with, with God, with your business, with your problems, with relationship, with health, with fears, with, with even sometimes your frustrations. They roll unto, unto the Lord, right? So at lunchtime, people are looking at you, oh, that's how you roll. You eat vegan. Yeah, that's, that's my commitment, right? To good health. And, and sometimes it's good to roll in a different way. It's good to roll in the understanding that we're, we don't know everything. Um, we're insufficient to cope with certain complexities of life and pressures. There's a lot of obstacles to life. And you have to trust that God is able and, and, and willing to sustain you and guide you and protect you. That's how you have to roll. Doing uh, gospel work is a decision that's going to pave the way for long-term success. It's not going to come easy. It's not going to come quick. So sometimes we have to be careful uh, when we're looking at the world and they get that quick success. We have to be very careful. We're not there for the short term. We're there for the long term. And then we're going to get into eternity. But we have to start making decisions now, again, for that long-term success. In Proverbs chapter 17, we're going to look at another characteristic of those that are meek. And I just wanted to go over this because there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding about people who are meek. But in the biblical sense, people who are meek are actually um, some of the most um, the strongest, most intelligent, and, and, and kind-hearted people you're going to meet. Those people who are not meek, just look at their life and see if they're happy. In Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 27 says, He that hath knowledge spare his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. 28. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. So people, one of the characteristics of those that are meek are people who can be quiet sometimes. I mean, even sometimes, all, all the time. Of course, I'm not saying to be quiet when there's things going on that are wrong. You know, oppression and things like that. But one characteristic of people who are meek are those that are quiet. And from my observation, I've observed that quiet people know how to listen. Quiet people know how to listen. That's what they do. As opposed to someone that's always talking. They have to develop that skill of just sitting quiet. But those that are meek are quiet. Uh, people, again, who are meek, they're quiet, they're able to observe. And so they spend less energy on talking and more energy in reflecting and observing people and the situation that they're in. That's a good skill. Another characteristic of being quiet is people think before they speak. Right? This is important today. Because if you're quiet and you speak, don't people tend to listen more? Think about somebody that's always talking, always talking, you know, just doesn't be quiet. After a while, you just, what, what do you do? He's like, ah, oh, they're just talking, you know. You just shut them off, right? But someone who's quiet, they speak, you sort of listen. Why is that? Why is that? Is that because when they speak, they speak something of substance, right? They're not into quantity, they're into quality. Someone else who's quiet is more approachable also because they have learned to listen, and people know who listens. They have learned to listen, and so if someone knows how to listen, then you're going to speak 
And then they're going to give you some good advice, right? Because they're going to think. So listening skills is very important. Another thing is that they have a, a calm temperament, right? A calm temperament is very important. People are attracted to that. This world is so chaotic. And also people who are meek, they're quiet, they watch their words. Christ always said things to heal, right? And didn't say anything that was unnecessary. Let us go to an example. Who's the meekest man on earth, according to the Bible? Well, of course we know Christ, right? But Christ was um, 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 direct when he described Moses, right? As being the meekest man on earth. Let us go to Numbers chapter 12 and verse 1. In Numbers chapter 12 and, and uh, verse 1 through 4, there's a situation here in which we are familiar with, right? It says, And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Now, what's wrong with marrying an Ethiopian woman? I don't know. No, I, don't, I can't see anything. Right? Wrong with that? Okay. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. I could just imagine... You know, when, when God summons them, you know, how was that voice? And how were their temperament? How was, how, did they shake? Were they scared? Right? It wasn't like, where are you? It was like, come, come out. Come out. Come here now. You three. Oh, boy. I can just envision the big belt, right? <laughs> But Miriam and, and, Mo, and Aaron, I'm sorry, I was going to say Moses, but Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman. And how did Moses react? Did he say, oh, you, you guys are this and you guys are that? Did he strike back? No. You know, it's very important to be um, blameless because when you're blameless, isn't it easier to deal with um, situations like this? Yeah. Well, it's very important to be blameless. But if you're not blameless and you get... It's, it's, isn't it funny how sometimes people do things and then they get rebuked and they fight back? But if you're meek and you get blamed for something you didn't do, then for me it's easier to deal with that situation. Because you know who's fighting for you. Right? And um, I have to say this, though. I do know that there are people out there that recognizes somebody with these uh, characteristics of being meek, and they do say things. They do fight, sometimes in, in front of you and sometimes behind the scenes. You may never know. But there are occasions where people are going to come after you because you are meek and you seem an easy target. But here, God is showing that he fights for those that are meek. God said, "You come out, you three. And then what happens after that? You know, then God rebukes Marion and, and vindicates his servant Moses. And then Aaron and, and Marion had to go through some soul searching here. Right? Marion had, a, had leprosy, right? And, and um, Aaron had his issues. Had to, he had to be dealt with in a certain way. And God dealt with them. And my thinking is that they must have become uh, meek at that time, or if not in the process, because they've been, now they see what God can do. 
And so the meek would trust God, that his power and mercy would do good for us. That if we wait patiently and quietly for the outcome, God will vindicate us. We cannot give in into anger and anxiety and go for those pills, you know, that people take and they get worse. The truth is that we're all going to have opposition and setbacks. And so we can either deal with it in a meek manner and be blessed and go through the process, or we can get frustrated, we can be angry, we can um, do all kinds of things, right, to get us into deeper trouble. Being meek is consistent with a peaceful freedom from distress, from anger, is based on trust, and is based on a systematic and, uh, and developing way in which we can continue that process of walking in that Christian walk and become meek. Now, is being meek good? Should everybody be meek? But why is it so difficult to be meek? Because it is a good thing. And even when you see it in the dictionary and you see the, the meaning, you say, no, that can't be it, right? And everybody loves a meek person, right? You want your boss to be meek. You want your children to be meek. But what about me? Is it good for me to be meek? Why is it so difficult to be meek? Um, there are different reasons why. Let us go to one reason. Let us go to Luke chapter 7 and verse 34. We're almost done. Let us go to Luke 7 and verse 34. I think you got there before I did. In Luke chapter 7 and verse 34, it says, The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. Now, what was Christ preaching? He was preaching repentance, right? Reformation, lifestyle changes, things that were good. So he's preaching how to be meek. But what happened? What happened to the people? to those who rejected him. How come was it so difficult for them to change? Well, from what I see is that their minds were under the influence of their debate passions. In other words, every time a person sins, the resistance becomes less. And so when that resistance becomes less, sin is done over and over. You're trapped in iniquity, and you become blind so the fact that what you're doing is sin. And then after that, what happens? When they're met with someone with meek, the war starts, right? There's war right away. And I'm telling you, and it will not fail. You go to a gathering and just open your mouth to those people. And, and they ask questions of you. And just be honest and see what happens. And now if they're a Christian, they might relate to you, but if they're not, what's gonna happen? There's gonna be war. They're gonna say things about you. Did they say things about Christ here that weren't true? This is one of the reasons why it's so difficult for people to be, not become meek, because of the things other people say. You know how difficult it is for somebody to say, things, some, uh, say something about you that's not true? You stole something. Oh, wow. Isn't that an insult if you didn't do it? Have anybody here been accused of something they didn't do? Am I the only one? Well, I, did, I did stuff, you know, that, that was bad. But there's some stuff I didn't do. I got blamed for it. And that's the problem. We have to be consistent. So we have to understand that um, when people come to us with annoyances, of life, of the things they say to us, 
we, we have to um, be patient. We have to be careful not to strike back. Because God works miracles to glorify God, right? Amen. He did the healing. He did the feeding of the people. Um, he, he really uh, fought for his people. But what happens when people indulge in sin? Does God work miracles to get them out? No. God lets sin play out. And you can read that in Pay Trust and Prophets, page 268. Did God vindicate Christ? Of course. Any examples? The example I think of is when the centurion said, for surely this was the Son of God. Because you see, you have people here talking about God, calling God what? A wine bibber. He's a gluttonous, right? He, he's, he, he likes sinners. And so the crucifixion, when the centurion soldier said, surely this was the Son of God, don't you think that these people were there? I think so. I think they were. And so when you read Mark 15, 39 and Matthew 27, 54, you see how God vindicated Christ, among other things. In the Zion of Ages, page 301, to close, Blessed love of the meek. The difficulties we have encountered may be very much lessened by that meekness which hides itself in Christ. So in other words, the problems we're suffering are bad, but they can be lessened if we hide ourselves in Christ. If we possess the humility of our master, if we rise above the slights, the rebuffs, and annoyances to which we are daily exposed, they will cease to cast a gloom over the spirit. The highest evidence of nobility, nobility did I say that right? Nobility. Nobility. I think I got it. Nobility. In a Christian, is self-control. A person who is meek, this is another characteristics. Self-control. He who under abuse or cruelty fails to maintain a calm and trustful spirit robs God of his right to reveal in him his own perfect character. Lowliness of heart is the strength that gives victory to the followers of Christ. It is the token of their connection with the courts above. It's a beautiful writing. In other words, when we are in trouble, we have to let God get the glory by us being meek and let him work in our life so we can glorify him. But what happens is that people want the glory. And things are done which are inappropriate. Things are said which are inappropriate. And so the influence of the gospel is lost. They continue on to say, Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly. Those who reveal the meek and lowly spirit of Christ are tenderly regarded by God. They may be looked upon with scorn by the world, but they are of a great value in his sight. Not only the wise, the great, the benefits, will be gained a passport to the heavenly courts. Not only the busy worker, full of zeal and relentless activity, no, the poor in spirit who crave the presence of an abiding Christ, the humble in heart, whose highest ambition is to do God's will, these will gain an abundant entrance. They will be among that number who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Revelation chapter 7. And verse 15. Blessed are those that are meek, for they should inherit the earth. And so there are vacancies in the kingdom of God. And we are applying for that job. And so we have to be qualified to be in heaven. And one of the things we have to be, we have to be meek. For God not only wants to give us mansions and this earth, but he wants to give us so much more. Think about what God can do for us. If we are meek and we inherit the earth and we're governing, 
Does our responsibilities become less or they become more? They become more. So, in the, and when we um, con continue life, and I say this in faith, in heaven, we might be in charge of galaxies. We might be in charge of planets. We might be uh, responsible for the weather in, in certain realms. We don't know. But in order for us to govern in earth and inherit the earth, we have to be meek. So I bless those. Um, I ask for blessings for those who are joining us tonight and join us next week as we continue to look at the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5. And at this time, we're going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, uh, for this wonderful gift of your words. We ask, dear Heavenly Father, that the significance of this um, Sermon on the Mount uh, may not be overlooked. We see in this sermon the criteria that we need in order to live a perfect and godly life. We see this as the blueprint as to how we should build uh, on the rock, how we should build um, the work of the gospel, and how we should um, behave and develop. The Heavenly Father, we know that uh, Christ came to save those that are um, lost, and which is all of us, and we accept the Heavenly Father, your words, and all the things that you have to teach to us. And we thank you, dear Lord, for your wonderful example after the sermon. For we know that many preach, but they do not live up to what they preach. But we know that you did, and so we are thankful for being here, and you're worthy of praise in our worship. And we ask blessings upon those who are listening at this time. In Christ I pray. Amen. So at this time, we'll have our testimony and prayer requests before we pray. Any testimony or any prayer requests that you'd like to um, share with us at this point. And I just want to thank Elder Jose for that. Um, that's a testimony in itself um, that it's, it's all part of the experience that we come when we come to Christ. You know, Christ called us to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow him. And when we do that, we learn to hold back instead of pushing forward, instead of being prideful and rush ahead, we pull back. So let's praise the Lord for that you know, talk, but also that a testimony in a way. Um, because I tell you, in every aspect of life, sometimes you have to pause and pray a little bit and think a little bit and, um, and allow the Lord to do something in your mind or in the experience that you're going through. So I just um, thank the Lord for that. Blessed are the meek. And it is what we need more of in this world today. Um, meekness, although the world testifies of something else, they will try to make it sound like blessed are the, the um, those that are um, strong or those that are more forward in this life. Um, you ever see a child that is not meek? It's a forward child, right? So blessed are the meek. Any prayer requests or testimony at this time um, that you would like to share with us? Any? Oh, any? No, you go. Yeah, I'll give you the mic. Just in case, yeah. Any prayer requests or testimony that you'd like to share? Sorry. If you be in prayer, he's going through a really hard time right now. And he say he said to me today, Brother Terry just preached about meekness. And he said to me, you know, Janet, I could have been out of that this this, this situation. Or if I did everything what everybody else was doing, but I choose not to do it, and now I'm suffering for it. And as the brother Taros preached this, I said, it just, remind, just reminded me of what he said to me today. So I just have to encourage him, keep him in prayer, because he said he wants prayer. He doesn't want to do something that he should not do. So let's keep him jumping in prayer. Amen. Thank you. I'll keep jumping in prayer. I just want to give a uh, thanksgiving, prayer of thanksgiving. My aunt um, was operated. She had hip surgery on Monday, and mm -hmm. it came out well. 
That's good. She's in um, that um, recovery process. So um, I thank you for the prayers. Amen. Yes, I remember we were praying about that last week. And so she did the operation. So that's good. Also, prayer at Thanksgiving, we went to um, Philadelphia. Okay. That trip went, went well. And so I was glad that we can experience something different um, and people see that the um, the resources are there it's just that the mindset has to change in a way that will that that's different than what we're used to and so I think that it was a nice cooperative um, um, effort and I think it was very successful okay so pray for that trip that happened and for everyone to be able to catch a vision on that trip praise the Lord any, any testimony or prayer request? Uh, we have a prayer request from Nathan, who is thankful for family. And we also have a prayer request for, for or from Sister Emily, who asked for prayer for a neighbor's wife, Donna, she just recently lost her husband. And also for um, Sister Reina, as she's not feeling well. And also for Emily herself, she's still having some pain in her arm. Amen. Any other prayer requests or testimony? Just myself personally, I just want to thank the Lord for the experience that we have had over the last eight years. Um, um, and um, just, I just want to thank the Lord. Sometimes I, uh, I have uh, I'll hear something happen or something, and then I look back at the mindset I was in. How many years ago and the sensibility and the mindset that I'm in now and I'm just thanking the Lord for the growth and for the the, the experience that I've had um, here together with, with you all and just the general experience in the church for the last how many years been in the church just um, you know just something you have a you're, you're growing but you're just not growing in ways that is acceptable and then you look back at the past, and it's good to be able to look back. You know, sometimes things could go a different way, and you would not be able to look back, but it's always good to be able to get to a point where you felt like you can look back instead of just stuck in the rut and hoping one day you can get out of the rut. So we don't say much more, but it's just good to be able to feel like you, 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 you know, at least for me, I've, I'm just glad that I feel like um, I've experienced some victory or some successes instead of always just hoping one day we, you can do this or you can do that and never really get to do it. So I just want to thank the Lord for that. This is something that I've been thinking a lot about, just being able to have some results instead of just always hoping, that, hey, one day it would be nice to do this or it would be nice to do that and never can do anything. One more before we pray, uh, prayer request or testimony. So I'm just really thanking the Lord, but going back, you know, while Isaiah was presenting, I was thinking about meekness for true, how, you know, meekness can really make you kind of just hold off and hold on instead of rushing out there. Amen, sister. She was saying that I'm an offshoot. Um, you are an offshoot. And she thought it was funny. <laughs> and I said, why are you calling me an offshoot? She said, well, you are not in the conference churches anymore. I said, you know, I was able to testify that right now. You know, she's good. Right now. Right now, I have learned things. I would think I ever would have learned Adventism. I'm actually, now you're telling me I'm an offshoot. Now I could tell you why I'm, I'm actually a um, in an uh, independent church right now, uh, from all the troubles and what's going on in the conference churches, 
and I could stand up now and say, I'm not ashamed to be an, even though you call me an offshoot, I am glad to be an offshoot if that's what you call me. Yeah. I am happy because guess what? Now I'm learning more than I ever knew about my Jesus, my God, and I don't care if anybody called me offshoot anymore. So like you, I grew. Because back then, I would have probably said the one thing or two things that you shouldn't have said. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, just thank the Lord for his blessing. Um, we'll kneel and pray over the prayer request and ask the Lord for his blessing. And um, let us kneel to pray. Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, we are so thankful for the blessings of this day that you have given to us. We are thankful dear lord for the experiences that you grant to us you lead us in past dear lord that at times it um feel like the trials are um probably here to destroy us or to break us down but we know dear lord that you never give us more than what we can bear and you lead us into strange paths dear lord strange to us but we believe and trust indeed that you know best we have seen and testified dear lord that you have done good to us we thank you dear lord for the experience that we have together. We thank you, Father, for the blessing that we have that oftentimes you give us the opportunity where we can pray for others, we can give a word to others, we can help others, and we can be a, a source, dear Lord, to be worked by your Holy Spirit. May you continue to bless us in this way. May you continue to strengthen us, dear Lord, that we might be able to always walk humbly before thee and always to be meek, dear Lord, always to be looking, dear Father, for a way of escape or looking for your deliverance in times of trouble. I pray for John Pierre, dear Lord, that you may continue to bless him and be with him. I pray that you may give him the strength to stay on the straight and narrow. Give him the strength, dear Lord, to not only be faithful with what he already know, but to seek thee more, to seek to learn more of thee, and to seek to grow in thee. I pray a special prayer and of thanks for Sister Martha's um, on that you continue to bless her as she healed from the surgery that went well. We thank you, dear Lord, for your hands of mercy and protection over those that we love, dear Lord. And we pray that you may continue to be our guide as we seek, dear Lord, to bless and to encourage and to uplift those that are often sick or feeling down for whatever other mental reasons. May you bless also Nathan, dear Lord, and be with him um, and continue to um, be a blessing to him as he experienced the joy of family and um, that he might always be gracious and grateful for the family. We know that so many young children grow up in this world, they suffer so much because of the lifestyle of their parents. And so I pray that you may come to bless him, bless his family. I pray, O oh Lord, that you may bless um, um, Donna, who um, is a neighbor's, um, the neighbor of Emily's. Um, may you bless um, the situation that they're going through right now. I pray a special blessing for Sister Rain and that your hands of healing may be upon her um, in all her ways. Bless her spiritually, physically, mentally, and continue to heal her body, heal her mind, heal her spirits, that as she deal with difficulties of this disease, dear Lord, that it might not bring her so down, so low spiritually or mentally that she um, get even sicker, that you may just heal her and touch her in all her ways, dear Lord, and uplift her both mind and body. I pray also a blessing on Emily that as her elbow is not working well, that she might not only con and that you may guide her also how to take care of her body and to how to use natural remedies to, to uh, relieve the inflammation that she's going through. Uh, pray, dear Lord, again a special thanks upon all of us, upon all your children, dear Lord, and uh, we know you're working to bring about change in this world. You're working to bless those who are willing to listen. And we pray that you may straighten our hands, that as we not only try to walk the narrow walk, but also try to be a blessing to others, that you may straighten us more as you have blessed us over the years to give us not only the independence and the freedom to be able to practice religion according to the Bible, but also you give us opportunity to grow. And as we grow, dear Lord, I pray that you may straighten our hands, that we might be able to be a more powerful witness to those that are often caught up into mental slavery because of the systems, dear Lord, that are in rebellion within the churches and in the society. Bless us, dear Lord, we pray, and I pray that you may continue to guide us that in all that we do, we might always exercise self-control, we might always 
wait on thee, we might always live by faith and not always rush ahead of thee. Lord, give you an opportunity here, Lord. Give you the space and the time to be able to work in our lives. We thank you for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us. And we pray, dear Lord, that you may even answer our silent prayers, we pray. This is our prayer in Jesus' name.